Let's see where some other places we can add it. Ooh, right there. Jesus, all our sins and griefs. Oh, that's another spot. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Dave in here helping you play creatively. So in this lesson, I'm going to take a very simple song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, but I'm gonna show you how you guys can take a simple song and then how you can begin to add more complex ideas to it. So in this lesson, you're gonna see the process. Rather than me just showing you something that I've come up with, we're gonna come up with these things on the spot. And I'm gonna try to do this in 10 minutes. All right, let's get to it. Now, I'm hitting a timer, so hopefully I can stick to my time. Okay, so the basic chords for this What a Friend We Have in Jesus are C, what a friend we have in Jesus, F, C, all our sins and griefs to bear, okay? So those are the simple chords for the song. I'm assuming you guys know those chords already, okay? Now, what would be the first thing I do to any song um, to add a little bit more complexity. I would begin by playing the melody, okay? All right, so that just took it up one more notch, okay? Uh, the second thing I would begin to do is I would start to add chord extensions. And so what I mean by that are adding things like sevens, nines, elevens, thirteens, okay? So for this song, we're just gonna go ahead and add a major seven and dominant seven chords right now, okay? And so the most simplest way I would think through that is, okay, if I'm on C major, I would just bring that C down to to the, to the note below it, okay? And so that gives me a C major seven. If I play F major seven, I would bring the F down a, a note below it, okay? And then if I'm on G major seven, sorry, if I'm on G major, I would bring the G down to a note below it. And that's gonna give me a G dominant seven. It's a little bit different than the major seven chords. Now let's go ahead and play that. Okay, so now you're beginning to hear just one more layer of complexity. We've gone ahead and added the melody. We've gone ahead and put some chord extensions in there, okay? Now, the next thing I would begin to do is I would start to add passing chords, okay? And so this is what it would sound like, and then I'll explain what I'm doing from here. So uh, let's see. Okay. Now, what I did in that section was I went ahead and added uh, passing chords in two sections of the song. I added this passing chord here to the F. And what that is right there, it's a 2-5-1 passing chord. And what I mean by that is F is my 1, okay? Think of F as the 1 chord, and then G minor is my 2. C dominant seven is my five, and then I'm going back to F, which is my one. So instead of just playing, what a friend we have in Jesus, I can play the two, five, one of F, right? So, what a friend we have in Jesus, all right? And then I'm trying to keep the same extensions and melody that I had prior, all right? And the reason why I'm playing my G minor seven like this, or I, I'm a written, I'm, the reason why I'm playing G minor seven, or G, in this case, actually G minor nine, is because I'm already thinking through my extensions, okay? So we're past playing like the three note chords, okay? We've already added major sevens, dominant sevens, and in this case, a minor seven, all right? And then I'm playing the A, which is the nine, because that's where the melody is. All 
okay? So that's the next thing I would think through. And then going to G, it actually follows the same two, five, one principle, except I'm just playing five, one, okay? So I'm playing, uh, Okay, so what I'm doing there first off is I'm playing a D dominant seven, which is my five going to the one chord, thinking of G as my one in this case, okay? So D dominant seven going to G. However, what I'm doing here is I'm changing my voicing. So instead of playing the dominant seven like this, I am taking the F sharp and I'm bringing it down, okay? To down here. And then I'm playing the chord like this. All right. And so I naturally go ahead and add my nine in my left hand whenever I play a chord like this for some reason. And so that's why I have the E in there. Okay. Needs to bear. Okay. All right. So that's just. The next thing we could do, um, we can add some passing chords, either two five one passing chords or five one passing chords. All right. So another thing that I would do is I would probably look at some chord substitutions. So we have what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What I would do is I would. Because I'm playing C twice, I know that I can substitute C for the relative minor of C, which would be A, okay? And so I can play an A minor instead of the C, okay? And so I'm gonna play the A minor instead of C here, so. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Now, you may think of that being as nothing, right? But then that allows for other types of passing chords and substitutions. So like if I know I'm going to that A minor, I can then begin to think, hey, what if I played the two, five, one of A minor, just like how we were thinking the major two, five, one of F or the five, one of G. So we have, what a Sins and griefs to bear. Okay, you see how we begin to add some complexity to the song, all right? The next thing I would start to look at, I would start to look at embellishing the melody a little bit more since we've changed so much of the chords uh, so far. Um, so, so I would begin to start adding things like grace notes, okay? That's one of the first things I would do. All right, before I've even changed the melody. So, and the way I'm coming up with my grace notes is, if E is my melody note, I'm going to either play the note that's one half step below it, so like that, or I'm going to play the note that's a, a whole step below it, which is D, and the note above it to get to E, so. And that begins to add just, I've found a whole new layer of texture once you start adding grace notes to your uh, basic melody. So let's try it. Um. Only thing I did a little bit differently was I just started adding some grace notes to different areas of the melody. All right, so we've learned so much so far. Uh, we looked at some passing chords. Uh, we looked at adding the melody. We looked at adding some chord extensions. Uh, we looked at some grace notes. Um, we looked at even two five one uh, passing chords for 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 minor chords. All right, which is pretty cool. Okay, so. 
Another thing I would probably start to add at this point would be some inner voicing, okay? And so inner voicing is when you take a chord, like let's say C major, and this is the regular chord, but you start to play things in the, in the middle of that chord. So like this is the structure of the chord, however you do something like this, right? It's in the middle, it's in between the chord. And so it's not necessarily the melody of the song, but it's it, like, like a counter melody almost, all right? So that puts us at 10 minutes. So this will be the last thing we talk about, all right? So that's something I would li I, I like to do right there. So what? Okay, and what I'm doing there is G and E, F and D, E and C, okay? Now remember this, I always think of my inner voicing notes as, I try to think about them in terms of sixes, okay? And so what I mean by that is this, uh, G, E, sorry, E, is six notes away from G. So counting from G, you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And each of these are six degrees apart, okay? So, so that's how I like to think of my inner voicing. So let's see where some other places we can add it. Ooh, right there. Jesus, all our sins and griefs. Oh, that's another spot. So, all our sins. Oh, so, all our sins and griefs to bear. Okay, so just forget that last part. The only thing I did differently was I began to add some inner voicing to it, okay? And so for that D, all right, I'm, think, I'm thinking that little melodic line right there, and then I'm adding G, F sharp, and E in my left hand, and everything is six degrees away from each other. All right, so let's stop right there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like content like this, man, do me a favor. Go ahead and like and subscribe. That just tells the YouTube algorithm this channel is not all that bad, all right? And they are gonna go ahead and distribute it to more people. And if you would like to learn uh, piano in a step-by-step -step process, so you wanna understand these concepts further, you want it broken down more for you, you would like some exercises on passing chords and substitutions, go ahead and check out our website play-creatively.com where you can find everything you need to grow in your piano playing journey. Well, until next time, remember this, keep watching, keep learning, and we'll keep growing together. By the way, go ahead and check out this video that goes through this same process for one of my other favorite songs. I'll see you guys next week.